Welcome to Atmospherics, aka Atmos. My name is Network Gremlin, aka Abaddon Ignatius, and this is my introductory guide to Atmos. This will be a very beginner introductory guide because I don't want to get into anything extremely complicated, and myself, I am maybe a little bit inexperienced in the complicated stuff but i would like to make this guide because it has been requested and it is vitally important because i do have to admit people do not like it when you poison them to death everyone loves a good atmos but no one remembers that there's a good atmos everyone hates a bad atmos and they remember when you're a bad atmos so just keep in mind that it is slightly high stakes even though it may seem boring and at times it can get a little bit tense when you uh, when you have an issue and you don't know how to solve it. But this hopefully will be a good introduction to everyone. This will get updated in the future as the meta changes or something changes. But in any case, we should get started. So, first things first. What should you have and what is your role? Atmos is in charge of atmospherics. So that is keeping the oxygen, nitrogen level balanced. That is keeping the temperature at an, at an even rate. That is managing the output and the waste management. As well as other things such as repairing, um, simple engineering things such as repairing. But more importantly, repairing oxygen systems in places that have been bombed or spaced or something similar to that. So you'll be primarily in charge of in charge of making sure that the pipes lead to the vents and that there are correct um, air scrubbers in every room or whatnot. Your basic repair jobs such as, oh, there's not any electricity, that doesn't really affect you. That's not your primary job. Your primary job is making sure that everyone has a good level of oxygen and the temperature in the station is A-OK. -okay. As number one priority. You can start getting into creating trite, um, which I do, I do I do want to touch on now just a little bit is that I will go over the different elements, but you can get into tritium and freeze on production, which will be able to, you will be able to sell to cargo. So Atmos can also be a, a money generation thing, but that's way more advanced than just way not the topic of this video but in any case so now what should you have as an atmos technician well when you spawn in and if you if you spawn in at the beginning of the round or whenever you come in you need to make sure that you have these basic things okay so firstly please ignore also all of this extra stuff this is just admin stuff for creating this test map First things first, what you want to make sure of is that you've got everything that's, you know, basic to being an engineer. So come to your, to a technician locker and just make sure you've got everything. Again, ignore all the extra admin stuff. Your basics. Now, hard suits are quite important to Atmos because you are working with gases. And if you open a pipe and there's gas in that pipe and it comes out, let's just say it's uh, it's plasma and you don't have your your internals enabled, your body is not going to be having fun. So the first things first, you want to come to a lock and you want to pick up your Atmos suit. You also want to pick up obviously your gas mask um, and your whatever oxid be your slime, then your nitrogen, but you know what I mean? Pick up your tank. Um, in terms of tools, and which you will which I will mention over there, you do want to have a gas analyzer a t-ray and as well as a hollow fan projector so these the the gas analyzer and the hollow fan they both come with the um they both come with the locker but you won't get the t-ray with the locker so what you're gonna have to do is you're just gonna have to run over to your um your closest uh, u-tool and just go pick up a t-ray because Sometimes you will be looking for a gas leak and you will have to look under tiles or whatever, whatever, and it's just, it just helps a lot. So I would recommend getting a, um, a T-ray. <clears throat> this is it. As well as you don't spawn with insulated gloves. So just remember that, that you do not spawn with insulated gloves. So you also need to pick that up from your uh, NG vend, right? And then other than that, there's not much that you're missing. Um, if you do need something more particular and also you should be spawning with i i 
I didn't spawn with it, but you will be spawning with engineering goggles. Um, that will come natural as well as an engineering headset. I've just got the assistant because don't worry about it. Now you have got all your stuff. What do they each do? Well, let's start with the T-Ray. T-Ray is pretty basic for most uh, most engineering. You will see, as you can see here, as you go along, it reveals everything that's under tiles. So it's very useful for kind of detecting when something's missing or not without having to rip everything up. Um, it can stay active in your pocket, so that's pretty cool as well. You don't need to hold it. Next, you've got your hollow fan. Now, I've actually got two here, but it doesn't matter. Let's just say there's a room that has been... Let's just say this room is spaced, and this room has oxygen. There will be a fire lock, obviously. You don't want... You don't want the vacuum of this spaced area to affect this. So what you do is, you stand in front of the door, and you press Z, and it'll create this little um, hollow fan. Now... It'll stop any gas, you know, coming in or coming through there. So now you can enter there and it won't space this room as well. It won't mess with this room's atmospherics. So that's important also when it comes to entering rooms that have got dangerous gases such as Freezon, for example. So keep note of that. Um, Beware does have charges, so don't use it all up quickly and then you don't know what to do with it or something happens like that. In any case... Next, and most importantly, what you are going to be using is your gas analyzer. Now, you obviously just want to press Z to activate it, you know, your use. And then I'll tell you the information about your environment. So this is the room that I'm standing in. You've got your pressure, 101.56 kPa. You've got your temperature. And then what gases are present in your environment. So as you can see here, a little bit of carbon dioxide, but it's mostly oxygen and nitrogen, which is what we want. In any case, I haven't set up Atmos, so now we're going to go over how to set up Atmos in the beginning of the round. Now I want to go over what these, all of these things do and like how do you use them. Um, and then after that we will go over how to actually set up your Atmos in your first game. So, most importantly, you're going to have your gas mixers and your gas filters, okay? Um... What they each do is you'll have your pipe, which is a, a pipe is what holds the gas that carries it around the station. Now your pipe will carry gases and then it'll carry it through and it'll come out this way. You just look at the arrows. Um, now a gas filter, a gas filter will filter out one gas out of that pipe system and into the left slot. So if I turn it on here, I haven't selected anything that's being filtered, so everything's just going to go through. But if I filter for, this is a nitrogen area, so let's just filter for nitrogen. If I filter for nitrogen, then let's just say there's oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide coming through here. Everything will come through except for the nitrogen. The nitrogen will cut off to the left. Now you can invert, so the arrow can go this way, down this way. You can flip it around. It doesn't really matter. All you got to know is that you have your input, you have your filter, and you've got your output. Next, you've got your gas mixer. Now, what is a gas mixer? Well, it'll take two different pipes. It doesn't matter what's in the in the gas, in like what gas is in the pipe. It's just going to take the two pipes and it's going to combine them, com combine the gases into another pipe, into the output. And the amount of gas it takes from each pipe is defined by the percentages. Your primary port is your is is your is the port that is 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 in line with your output. So as you can see here, your primary port is the uh, O2, your oxygen, and your secondary port or your side port is your nitrogen. Um, so your 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 side port will I mean it, it kind of describes itself with the ma with the gas uh, mixer. It's, it's it's on the side, right? And so in this instance, this is this is quite important to setting up Atmos is that this is your your gas mixture for your your breathable oxygen and your breathable atmospherics in any case just worry about what you're just just watch that you don't mix up your primary port and your side port and then you're actually doing the inverse of what you want to do um your output pressure is i always thought that it was o1 
I always thought that the input pressure was always, oh, it's only, it's only 1.325 kPa. No, it's 101, okay? Please take note of that. Don't make the same mistakes that I did. Um, in any case, now we move on to your, your average gas pump. It outputs, um, it, it literally just pushes the gas through at a, at a rate of, well, whatever it's set to. Um, in contrast to that, you have a volumetric gas pump, which transfers in liters per second instead of via, you know, pressure. The difference between the two is, is a little bit hard to explain. It's a little bit more of an advanced guide kind of thing. But just to make it simple, if you don't have high pressure and you want a constant, if you want a constant rate of flow, then just go with a volumetric gas pump. Um, this is simplifying it a lot, but just to generally understand how everything is going. So if you don't want to spike, if you don't want to spike your 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 um your KPA or your pressure, then then use a volumetric gas pump. But you shouldn't have to worry about that too much with basic Atmos. It should already be set up. In any case, then you've got your over here. This is your passive gate. The side that has that little, it looks like a little, um, you know, like a turn thing. But the red, the red on that side, that indicates the way that it, the input is. So your input is the red circle. The output is this way. So anything that flows through this way cannot come back in there, can't backflow because it's a passive gate. Uh, another thing is your manual valve that it just allows it. If it's open, which it, it shows with the green there, then uh, it'll allow the gas to travel through. If it's closed, it won't, you know, quite self-explanatory. Now you've got your connector port. If you've got a storage canister here, which you're gonna have to get used to, storage canisters, um, you take your storage canister and you put it on top of the connector port. Then what you do is you take a wrench and you connect it to, you anchor it to the connector port. Now when it's anchored, it is now a part of that kind of system. So you just want to take note of when you want to anchor it and how you need, you need something, you need a lot of pressure to keep the gas in the actual canister or at least you need something next to it like a gas pump or a volumetric pump that'll keep the gas in the storage container because if it doesn't it's, it's just going to flow back right so i know a lot of people that they, they just leave it the storage canister unanchored for a majority of the time in any case i'm just going to refill the power real quick now your connector port is essentially what you do to take gas out of a system if it's not coming out via a uh, an air vent, so in most cases you just you're just gonna if you want to for example take out oxygen, you're gonna take the storage canister and you are going to take it to a connector port and you're just going to wrench it in. Then all we'll do is it'll anchor it towards it. And now it is taking in gas from the system. Just something to take note of. Now, another thing you want to take note of is when it comes to your your inputs to the system and your outputs to the system, and I'm talking about the atmospheric system. So all of your rooms are essentially going to have, most of them at least, are going to have an air vent and an air scrubber, right? So an air vent is your is your input into the system and your air scrubber is your output it's going to sound a little bit contradictory but hear me out your air vent will input into the room whatever is being you know put into the pipe that it inputs and your air scrubber is going to take out of the room so you, when you're repairing something that's been blown up for example you need to make you need to make sure that you both have an input and an output so there's no imbalance or there's no taking out um, something that can be very dangerous is a carbon dioxide buildup, which can kill you instantly. So make sure that you've got vents in and out. Usually the only time you're going to have to worry about making sure is when someone's like a Cindy's blown up something and you've got to repair it and you've got to repair Atmos, which is a pain, but what are you going to do? 
in any case lastly the last thing i want to follow is go over the heaters the gas recycler the freezer and the portable scrubber so your portable scrubber is basically something that you you take around and let's just say there's a buildup of miasma which is a gas released when someone dies um or anything let's just say there's a freeze on leak or any any gas that you want to remove from an area and let's just say you just want to remove it quickly or it doesn't have access to whatever uh, it doesn't have any flow of air in or out you can take a scrubber to it and you can wrench it in you can anchor it and then it'll start scrubbing there's really not much more than than a to it and it'll just it'll it'll clean up the entire area of whatever's needing to be cleaned up so it'll just make the air cleaner it's, it's really quite simple now when it comes to your 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 pressure and your temperature that is something to also keep note of some stations will have a freezer at the input and the output to stabilize the um you you kind of think of it that some gases are going to come into the system a little bit warmer and some are going to come in a little bit cooler that's why you'll have a freezer set to 193k to make sure that it is now anything that's being inputted or in this case outputted to the to the system is a is, is a stable temperature in the same way that you also have the freezer here that, that can also keep the um, input into the system now the gas recycler is a little bit irritating to work to be honest with you it is quite frustrating essentially what it does is and it's still it's still it's so finicky it's so like irritating to work with that i mess it up sometimes even but a basic setup of how it is you want it to be is it needs a certain amount of pressure and a certain amount of temperature of the input to work now what you broadly want to aim for is that your your temperature of the gases are above 300 degrees celsius whatever that is in fahrenheit and your pressure needs to be above 3000 kpa um, in that case you're going to need an input of o, uh, co2 i will demonstrate working the um, gas recycling in a moment when i show you the the whole system but it'll input either o2 or nitrous oxide uh, co2 and or nitrous oxide so carbon dioxide or nitrous oxide and it'll output uh, uh, oxygen and so then that will feed back into your system now some stations unfortunately some stations don't have o2 miners and that will mean that you have to run a gas recycler that's the only way that you you make oxygen and that'll be reliant on your on your co2 miner and just i just want to pay close attention to this now what are miners and what are injectors and what is going on well on a station your input into the system will come from a gas miner so in this case it's your nitrogen so here's your nitrogen gas miner you've got your oxygen you've got your plasma don't worry you've got your water vapor etc 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 okay now the reason why i like tortuga so much is because there are gas miners for most of your main elements or main gases and so you've got your 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 nitrogen miner you've got your oxygen miner you've got your plasma etc 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 right even carbon even your carbon dioxide miner in any case um all you need to worry about is essentially if you have a miner you've got something that's creating the gas and then it comes out in the pipe in these pipes here which is is linked to back there um these pipes will be attached to a gas pump which will kind of lead everything forward now i just want to take a note of and make you aware of how you set this all up also matters on the way that the station layout is set up so not every station is going to be as clear cut as this as tortuga and i love the tortuga is probably my favorite atmos layout because it's just simple to understand and it looks nice 
So now we should go over how to set up Atmos or how Atmos now works. So when you first come into the game, let me just turn this off for now and I want to just set it back to what it was. When you first enter the game, nothing is going to be set up, okay? Your Atmos is not going to be set up. Now, in order to set it up, you need to look for a few things. First things first, what you should do is you should check, do you have an O2 miner on this map? And with time, you'll know instinctively. But for this, in this case, yes, you do. Do you have an N2? Now, I think every map has got an N2, but do you have nitrogen money? Yeah, 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 I do. So then what you can do is you then track the inputs of these two gases. So your, your nitrogen and your oxygen, you watch the input and you trace it and eventually and some some maps color code their their pipes some don't but in this case your nitrogen is red like a lighter red and your oxygen is a blue now as you can see they all kind of culminate in this gas mixer right so this gas mix mixture is actually probably the most important mixer in the entire station um, it's going to have the inputs of the oxygen and the nitrogen to mix it into creating breathable air for, well, the station. As you can see here, you have your nitrogen. Now, I suggest what I do is I set this to the maximum pressure possible, and then I turn it on. So you're going to turn on your nitrogen, you're going to turn on your oxygen, and I just turn it on max. And then that will both lead, as you can see, it comes through here, it comes to a, a T-junction T pipe, which brings it all the way around here into the gas mixer. Now, I think most maps, they already have a good mix setup made, but if they don't, just, just double check and open it up and just check. You want to keep the output pressure at 101. That's generally what, what you want your pressures to be. So if you look at your gas analyzer, um, it's a little bit below right now now if you have spacing it's going to drop significantly so you need to um repair any spacing as quick as possible because you, you're going to lose air um if we come back here so this is your oxygen in in this case this is your primary port which is your oxygen and this is your side port which is your nitrogen as i've described before now the optimum mixture is around 21 percent oxygen to 79 percent nitrogen I do want to take note though that you can increase it up to about 22 or 23% and that just helps you a little bit more when people start losing oxygen, like if Atmos loses oxygen, there's a little bit more oxygen in the, in the system that people can, you know, breathe off of. So I like to set it to 22, but 21 is more, it's fine. Um, let's just say that there was a, a lack of oxygen from something happened. You can increase it up to 30 and then drop it back down to whatever number you want when it started to stabilize. But in any case, you want to keep it at 101 kPa and you want to turn it on, right? Now, as you can see, this becomes the dark blue. Now, this dark blue is, is universal essentially for your breathable air output. As you can see here, I just turn on my gas pump and now it is outputting into the station. Um, if I have a look here, so what you do is you take your gas analyzer and you click it on the pipe to understand what's in it. You can see here the inlet is 22% oxygen, 78% nitrogen. That's the inlet. The output also 22, 78. Brilliant. That is what you want. You want your temperature around 293, 20 degrees Celsius. That's a good temperature. On some maps, I just want to take note of this. On some maps, Atmos is a little bit, well, some maps, aka Glacier, Atmos doesn't really do much because, well, it's glacier. There's no really, you know, the breath there's breathable air everywhere. But I digress. In most cases, you want to make sure that it's it's around 20, 20 degrees Celsius and uh, the output is at 101. In any case, uh, all that really matters, if we're being honest with ourselves, is um, the output amount. So if I set this to 4.5, kpa if i said it to 4500 excuse me as you can see here it's for 4445 but if i look here it's 101.3 that doesn't make any sense it does look at your inlet and your outlet here it's inputting at 444 
five KPA, 4,445. But in the outlet, because you've set this, um, this pump to 101.33, it's it's gonna it's gonna dial the pressure back and it's gonna keep it at that level. And as I've described, this this year will keep it from back flowing in. So it's only gonna be outputting good mixtures of oxygen. Now let's talk about the output quickly. Now the dark like blood red is usually your output of the station that will come from your air scrubbers. Now what this means is is that if if you follow around here, this is this is the whole system. This connects everything. All of this comes back to here, and you want to make sure that your your gas pump that leads that is leading this stuff is on. Now, a lot of stations, if not all of them, except for Glacier, have got this kind of setup where they'll take the output. You can filter out everything that's useful. So you can filter out the oxygen out of the output. Don't forget to turn it on. You can filter the nitrogen, excuse me. You can filter out the oxygen. Filter out the plasma. Filter out any sort of waste. I, I would choose tritium. You can filter out the water vapor. You filter out CO2, carbon dioxide. And then this one, it's already got a nitrogen, nitrous oxide canister in it. So I like to just choose it as nitrous oxide. Whatever, it, it will obviously be different determined on your station. But the general theme is, is that your output will then carry through and take out all the useful gases. And it will lead it eventually to the excuse me there turn that on it'll lead that to the output now in this case the output is going to be like what's going to be contained in the output is going to be miasma and freeze on because i haven't i haven't split or freeze on um oh and look at that right there here you got miasma already coming out miasma is going to be the most common output uh there's no need as far as i can tell to filter off miasma into a area there so what you're essentially the all all the output leads to is this final vent this final passive vent here and this passive vent it can allow input and output but generally because it's got the the, the pressure of the pipe is is pushing it into these pipes here and it's coming out this way it's going to be an output. But in the cases of, as I described earlier, a passive vent can go both ways, but depending on the way that the gas is flowing, it's going to, you know, the vent is going to move that way. So in this case, because, um, in the case of oxygen, for example, because there's a pump pulling gas this way with a high pressure, it's going to be taking oxygen from out that chamber. So I know that I said earlier, that it's 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 your input into the station but it can be an output you know it's a vent it's a passive vent but it is usually if not always an input because your gas will be um flowing from the pipe outward to the area if you think about basic physics of like gas moving from a high pressure environment to a low pressure environment and equaling out that's ex essentially what happens I'll, I'll put a diagram there so it just makes more sense um, a lot of this is physics based. If you just think about it in a like a rational way, you should you shouldn't have a problem. A lot of your miners or your little rooms of gas are going to have outputs that you can take advantage of. So let's just say uh, you want plasma in a container for example, for a storage canister. You'll see here you can it'll output into this this black pipe, and this black pipe will lead all the way out down to the you can set it up so it's down to this connector port um the way that you do that and this is important to note is that um if i just want to output plasma it is important to realize that you cannot just turn it on and that is you know assuming that the pump is on you cannot just turn it on and it's going to work what you're going to see here is that why is there nothing outputting in that pipe? 
it's because you don't have anything in your west inlet and specifically the code dictates that it has to be a 50 50 split so if you just want to input plasma you're going to need a hundred percent coming from the side port and zero percent coming from the primary so it knows okay i just i just need stuff coming from the side port and as you can see the outlet is now filled with plasma so you're just gonna have to continue that if you only want plasma that is you're gonna have to continue this on where instead sorry your primary port is going to be 100 percent of it is coming from the primary port turn that on and then you just keep on going down the line i just go one 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 because i don't have to move my my fingers to like one zero zero you know um and you know you can only go 100 percent of the way so it's it's fine in terms of it's just a speed thing as you can see it's slowly making its way down here and eventually let me increase this and take note of the pressure difference if you got 100 psi uh, 100 kpa coming here and 4500 in this thing there's going to be a little bit of a bottleneck um you know phys like in a physics kind of way uh here i can now say i want this plasma now in this container i can wrench it up and you can see if i've done this right and i have look at that it's filling up as you can see and so it's uh, yeah I, I i want that's all the plasma i want voila plasma 38 moles um and so that's kind of how you can take stuff out of the system in terms of into storage canisters for each different map there will be different ways of taking out of the system um one thing i do want to just note as a rule of thumb is you don't want to mess with the primary lines of a of a of an o2 system so in, in, in another in any case you do not want to be taking out of this line here like right here because you could mess up your gas mixture and Again, like I've said, people are not happy when they don't have breathable air, okay? Um, lastly, I just want to go over the um, the recycler, right? So some, and I just need, I'm going to do this passively now. I'm just going to reset all of this. So some, some maps, they don't have, they don't have, oxygen miners and so then what do you do in the case of them not having oxygen miners well they're going to have a recycler then now what you do with the recycler is you take your oxygen from you will then have an oxygen uh, gas miner and you take it through here and in, in, in this map this is how you do it but in other maps it, it may change um i just want to turn this off and we may get a little bit of plasma output because there's probably still some in the pipe, but that's okay. This is just for an example. And you're going to want to turn this heater on here. So there's a very delicate balance that needs to be... Ignore the 666. That was just the simplest to choose. Um, th there's a very delicate balance in terms of achieving your output and input of oxygen. And so there, there are certain loops that can be made to achieve an, 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 a recyclable rate. Sorry to do this to you guys. Just an editor's note that I have cut out the section where I go over the gas recycler. I found out that it is slightly inaccurate and I don't understand the concept fully. But all that I can do to give you that advice and from what I've shown you so far is that you need your recycler to be above 300 degrees celsius so what i would recommend is you you spike your temperature as much as much as possible with your heater and you set your general pressure around 3200 because you don't want if you if your pressure gets above 4500 it'll clog up the um the recycler and then you're not going to get any fl anything flowing so as long as you keep your pressure under 4500 and you keep your temperature around 3000 uh, above 300 degrees celsius you should be good and then it's just a matter of you know convention of like where the 
output travels but um i will make a redux version of this guide and you guys will have a lot better time understanding it i do apologize but i just want to make that editors know enjoy the rest of the video the stations that do have a reliance on gas recyclers usually have the correct layout set up so you don't have to do too much work but i will in my advanced guide and don't worry this is just my power on the station failing um, I will create a little bit of a more advanced guide that explains the direct mechanics of the gas recycler. But for now, you just need to generally understand how everything works in terms of oxygen. And other than that, um, I will be coming out with guides on, as I've said, the gas recycler, how to use it properly and make sure that every all the inputs are correct. Um, I'm also going to release a, a, a guide on how to create tritium as well as freezon which you can sell for mad amounts of cash if you do it quickly and you do it correctly um other than that i think that's going to be it for the atmos guide it's already turned into this such long video by. so i don't know if there's anyone still watching at this point but thank you for watching i really hope that this helps you and um get ready for the redux version which will be an even better quality version than this one peace Warning, nuking is now legal worldwide. I walk into Balenci, make them wipe me down. Oil filter on the clock, you won't hear a sound. I walk into Balenci, make them wipe me down. Oil filter on the clock, you won't hear a sound.